Don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel to support me. Food chain of a pond ecosystem, diagram and facts. In every natural environment, biological patterns exist to maintain a balance. When a distinct set of patterns, some of which are readily observable, are present, an ecosystem is able to function and persist as a singular and complex unit. One of the most fascinating elements of an ecosystem is the food chain that governs the flow of energy. Even in freshwater ponds that are hardly larger than an oversized puddle, a distinct pattern of energy or food distribution applies. In all ecosystems, a food chain takes on a linear structure that has much to do with the size of each organism and its abundance. Every link on this chain consists of a trophic level that is composed of biotic components. When a single level is disrupted, a cascade reaction can occur, resulting in significant changes in the abundance of other organisms and resources. For example, when tadpoles become present in large numbers each spring, more predators can survive in the pond as a result of the increased availability of proteins. The typical pond food chain is much more complex than just simple predator-prey relationships. It involves microorganisms that must generate their own food when a sufficient set of nutrient building blocks are available. It also involves microbes that are responsible for breaking down waste to free up these same building blocks. Primary Source of Energy in Ponds – Sunlight At the very base of the pond food chain are plants and microorganisms that rely on sunlight to survive. Thus, light is a limiting factor that largely determines the abundance of a pond's biotic components. All throughout the water column, an incalculable number of photosynthetic organisms compete with one another for access to sunlight. When provided with adequate light exposure, they can assimilate the nutrients that are found throughout the water column. Unlike photosynthesizing organisms, photoautotrophs, that are found on land, those in a pond benefit from the fluid nature of their environment. Instead of having to tap into a network of nutrients found in the ground, they have adaptations that mediate nutrient sequestration from the surrounding water. In freshwater systems that are perpetually cast in darkness, such as those in subterranean environments, microbes, chemoautotrophs, have adaptations that allow them to break down chemical compounds such as hydrogen sulfide. The majority of nutrients still need to enter the pond from a sunlit source, however. Trophic Levels in Freshwater Ponds Primary Producers Freshwater ponds are rich in primary producers, without which the entire food chain would cease to exist. These humble organisms play an extremely important role as they are the only pond inhabitants that are equipped with the mechanisms to produce their own food. As primary producers, aquatic plants can go from exceedingly tiny to large. In contrast, microbial producers are extremely small and will generally be present in numbers that are exponentially greater than those of consumers and decomposers. Primary producers make their food through photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. Some can switch between these mechanisms of production depending on the availability of light, nutrients, and chemicals. In ornamental and wildlife ponds, the typical components of this trophic level include submerged, marginal, and floating plants, along with algae and cyanobacteria. When there is an influx of nutrients, from fish waste, effluents, eroded soil, etc., the abundance of primary producers can increase to potentially harmful levels. Primary producer populations are usually kept in check or balanced out by competition amongst themselves, regulated amounts of nutrients, and the presence of primary consumers. A typical example of imbalanced productivity is the occurrence of harmful algal blooms. Avoid this scenario in your own pond by conducting routine water parameter tests and water changes. Well-maintained plants, which can aid in filtering excess nutrients out of the water and competing with phytoplankton for sunlight, are also key to keeping a balanced pond ecosystem. In freshwater ponds, primary consumers are usually herbivores or omnivores. They are fairly small in size though they are more likely to be seen by the naked eye compared to microbial producers. 
These include zooplankton, young tadpoles, fry and juvenile fish, snails, and water fleas. There are large primary consumers as well. These include herbivorous fish such as plecos and grass carp. Secondary and tertiary consumers Secondary consumers are generally carnivorous. Some are omnivorous and can switch between being key components of primary and secondary trophic levels. They must be larger than primary consumers, which are their main sources of nutrients. In freshwater ponds, secondary consumers range in size from young gobies and small amphibians to enormous sturgeons. Several bait fish fall under this category. They are extremely important in every pond's food web as they link larger predators to the more abundantly occurring primary consumers. Further up in the food chain are tertiary consumers. These are often considered apex predators once they reach maturity, especially if they cannot be preyed upon by other animals in their natural habitat. Game fish, for example walleye, large amoth bass, lake trout, large waterfowl, for example herons and storks, riparian mammals, and large reptiles make up this formidable trophic level. They occur in the lowest abundances and generally have longer lifespans and slower maturation times compared to lower level consumers. The components of these trophic levels are often viewed as keystone species and bioindicators. When apex predators are absent, it can mean that choice prey options, usually secondary consumers, are low in number or that water quality parameters are undesirable. This can eventually result in an increase of secondary consumers, followed by a decrease of primary consumers, and so forth. Decomposers Decomposers are considered the final part of a food chain as they can obtain nutrients from the spoils and remnants of all consumers. The linear flow of energy ends with them as they break down organic materials to free up nutrients once more. In some cases, decomposers are not placed at the end of a food chain as they cannot be categorized as a higher trophic level. There are, indeed, some exceptions in the case of large scavengers. This group can also be composed of animals that may be categorized as producers, such as bacteria, and consumers. In a detrital food chain, or one that begins with nutrients obtained from dead, organic matter, decomposers are found at the base of the chain. The most common decomposers in freshwater ponds include bacteria, fungi, insect larvae, small crustaceans, worms, and snails. An extremely vital yet sometimes underappreciated component in freshwater ecosystems, decomposers keep the environment healthy. Without them, animal carcasses and waste would pile up, causing scenarios of anoxia and mass mortalities. Their absence would also prevent nutrients from becoming available to primary producers. In fact, they give food chains a cyclical instead of a strictly linear nature. The food chain in an ornamental pond In a tightly regulated environment, such as an ornamental pond, the food chain is rather simplified. Depending on the extent of control, some trophic levels may be very sparsely populated. For example, in fully lined outdoor ponds with minimal plants and heavy filtration, consumers apart from ornamental fish may be present in low numbers. What you would need to watch out for are external predators that may feed on your precious fish, sustaining the food chain of a larger ecosystem where the pond is simply a microhabitat. The fish themselves may not necessarily be considered key links within the food chain of the pond itself if they are artificially fed. Nonetheless, they serve as regular contributors of waste nutrients to the pond system. To an extent, filtration may strip the pond water of this waste, but some will likely remain and be broken down to serve as a nutrient source for primary producers. A measure of biological control will always be present in any pond with biotic components. Typical Trends in Freshwater Food Chains Below are some principles that apply to most pond ecosystem food chains. As these can be very complex, there may be exceptions to these trends. Moreover, note that large ponds can have not one but multiple food chains that are particular to their microhabitats. 
These all interact with one another to build a food web with connections that can rival the complexity of those found in lakes. Organisms found higher up the food chain tend to be larger in size and are more likely to be carnivorous. Shorter food chains are able to conserve more energy, whereas longer food chains tend to have less energy available for the highest trophic levels. Metabolic efficiency does tend to increase up the food chain, however. Lifespan and maturation rates are longer for higher trophic organisms, mortality rates tend to decrease higher up the food chain. Some organisms can occupy two trophic levels or may shift their diets as a response to changes in the environment. Photoautotrophs are generally found at the base of every pond food chain. A significant alteration of population abundances for organisms in one trophic level tends to have a cascade effect on the rest of the food chain. Similarly, a change in the availability of a resource may have a bottom-up effect. Effect.